What's crackling codelets? So this is going to be kind of like a frequently asked questions type of video for the web developer bootcamp. This is a question that I see all the time. I've seen it for years. And so I wanted to address it in this video very quickly so I can just share this with students who ask the same question in the future. So basically the question is whenever we have some elements, a group of elements, in this case multiple list items in our HTML, and we select them, so we're using document.querySelectorAll to get all of the list item elements, and we're putting that inside of a variable called LIs, and we loop over it, and we add an event listener to each one of those list items, and then inside of that event listener, in that callback function, we are going to access the list item that is clicked with the this keyword. Now, students are wondering, why can't I just use LIs and then bracket syntax i instead of this. And so they try it and it doesn't work, they get undefined. And so here's the problem. This for loop right here will access each one of the list items inside of the LIs collection or array. And we get each one during each iteration of the for loop with the index, right? So LIs i in the first iteration will be LI zero, which will give us this first one over here, LI one. And then it gets incremented in the next uh, in in the next iteration, and so zero becomes one, and we get two over here, and then one becomes two, and we get three. Now you're thinking, okay, why can't I just access the first one's style, and then set its style equal to blue or black based on what it currently is? And the reason is, is that the for loop. And this is this right here, what I'm about to say is like the answer to the question the students are always asking. Why can't I use LI's bracket I? Or it could be any uh, array, so it doesn't matter. LI's is just the example for this particular use case. But why can't I access it with the bracket I? And the reason is this for loop gets run whenever this JavaScript gets run, whenever the page loads. Now, by the time you actually go and click on any one of these elements, that for loop has already been run. So if you know about for loops, the value for i is going to equal to li's.length because it stops running at i is less than li's.length and then the last incremented value is li's.length. Now, if you try to access li's li's.length, you'll get undefined because we start at zero, right? We don't start at one with our index, and then we go all the way up to li's.length minus one. So when we use i is less than li's.length, we're getting li's.length minus one for our last iteration, and then this code right here gets, one, gets run one last time. Now it doesn't get used because we don't go back into another iteration, but it does get run, and so the value for i, whenever the for loop is done, is gonna equal li's.length. And so what happens is when you click on one or two or three, the value for li's i is going to be li's, and then it's trying to access li's.length, which returns undefined. So if that's hard to visualize, let's go ahead and just throw in a debugger here, and I'll show you what happens live. So right now, if I put in a debugger, and if you don't know about debugger, it's this really simple tool in client-side JavaScript you just plug in the word debugger, you can put a semicolon after it if you want, and it will freeze the code wherever you have that keyword. And so the way you access it is from the Chrome console or whatever developer console that you're using. And now if I click on any one of these three, so I clicked on the first one, it locked in the debugger, it tells you it's paused in the debugger. You can see this code right here, debugger. And so if I go to the console over here, make this a little bit bigger, so that you can see it. And I pass in the value for this, we get the, the list item that we clicked, right? So this is always going to represent, at least in this context, inside of the click listener callback, it's gonna represent what was clicked. And we clicked on the list item element for the value of one. Okay, great. So that's what we use to make it actually work. Now, if you wanted to look and see if LIs is available, it is, it's a node list, which is basically an array, and it has three LI nodes inside of it, or three LI elements. And so 
then we look at the value for i. So this is the important part. i is 3. li's dot length is 3. Remember I said that? The i at the end of the for loop would equal to li's dot length. Now if the index for the first, second, and third are 0, 1, and 2, then 3 is not going to access any one of these three list items, right? So if you say li's i, you get back undefined. And this is just the very first time we've run this. So if we resume, we go back up here and let's click on 3 now. It pauses it. We go to the console. i is still 3, which means li's i is still undefined. But if we use this, it's the list item that was clicked. And so if we go back over to our code here, now you can see what's happening is in order to add these event listeners one time at the very beginning of the program, we loop over all of the list items right here. And for each list item, we add an event listener, which is a click listener. And so every time you click on these, this function right here is going to get invoked. And when you invoke that function, you have access to the element that was clicked using the this keyword. But here's the whole thing summed up. This for loop has already finished running by the time you click on any one of these. So by the time this function is invoked, the value for i is no longer 0, 1, or 2. It is li's.length, which is its final value. And that is why you cannot use li's bracket i here instead of this. And you won't be able to use it here either because this will end up giving you undefined. And of course, there is no dot style on undefined. So you just end up with a big error. So I would think that you would want to use this. Now, students don't necessarily have a, a good understanding of what this is. And so I would take some time, if I were you, to go figure out what this is. And this can be different things. It's it basically, it's just a keyword that represents something in the context of a function. If you want to support DevSprout.io, then check out this Chrome extension that I created. You can add it to your browser with the click of a button. And then once it's installed, you can go over to udemy.com and anytime that you're thinking of buying a course, let's say you're just checking a course out, the extension will notice what you're doing and it'll actually redirect you to the same course page, but it'll add my affiliate ID to the URL. So you can see here, it's added my ID to the URL. And now if you do happen to buy that course, I'll make a small commission off of that sale. And so in the case of this particular function, this represents what was clicked. Now you can also access it with the event. So this function doesn't have an argument. And this is kind of outside. This is just a little added bonus here. But if you put E or event, or if you know how uh, parameters work, you could literally put taco here and we could access the event with taco. But the way that these functions are designed, the first argument is meant to be the event. So we'll just do event just to be explicit. And we'll throw our debugger back in here, save our code, refresh, and open up the console again, clear that out. And so then when I click on three here and we go to the console and we look at event, you'll see it's a mouse event. Okay. And if we look at event dot, I believe it's current target, you'll see that it's the same value as this. So you could, if you want an alternative to this, you could use the current target of the event. Just know that this is a shorter version of event.currentTarget. And so if we go back here, remove the debugger, and we take this and we change it to event.currentTarget with a capital T, and then we change this one too. And now we save, and we refresh. And now if we click on one, it changes it to blue. Click it again, it toggles it back to black. Two, it's blue, same for three, good. So it works using event.currentTarget, but why would you use that if you could just use the this keyword, right? So it's a lot easier to use this, it's more succinct. You don't have to add that extra parameter in the function there, and you're good to go. So that is explaining why you cannot use li's bracket i in place of this, but also showing you a quick alternative with event.currentTarget. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks a lot, and we will catch you in the next video.